Hey guys, welcome to BMW Vlog and welcome to Daytona 24 Hours. I am here with Connor DeFilippi and he's going to be driving the BMW M Hybrid V8. So Connor, what I want to find out from you because we've done a tech talk with one of the other guys, tell me more what it feels like driving this car compared to GT, for example? Well, it's a rocket ship. Uh, it's a rocket ship on wheels, really. We get a little over 200 miles an hour here at Daytona, okay. which is the uh, fastest I've been in a race car for a really long time. Obviously, we have naturally aspirated engine in the back, turbocharged, but we also have the hybrid system, so we have like an extra 30 kilowatts of power. Okay. So um, you really feel it, especially on acceleration, which is, which is really neat. The GT car, now that I look back, uh, it's definitely a good chunk slower. The closing rates between the cars is, is very fast. Um, but this is an exciting car to drive. It feels very alive when you're driving it. Um, and like I said, just having, having the speed that we have here at Daytona is, makes it really enjoyable. Cool. So how was the transition from like the other classes into this class? Did you have to do any special preparation as far as your driving skill set, all of that? Skill set, it's really another race car in a way. Okay. Uh, as a driver, I mean, I've been racing for a long time. So it's really about adapting uh, to the conditions, adapting to the higher speed. The downforce level in this car is a lot higher than a GT car. So really just building that trust level in the car itself. And once you have that, then it's just another race car. You're always trying to flirt with the limit of, uh, of grip on the tire. But um, also these, these cars have carbon brakes, which I think is probably the biggest difference yeah. that for me personally as a yeah. driver, trying to get used to that. When the brakes become very temperature sensitive, sure. it's just like in the road cars even, you notice when you have the, you know, the ceramic brakes in, yeah. the, in the road cars, when they're cold, maybe they don't report quite as good. It's yeah. the same in real life. So during the night when it's freezing, you're on new tires, cold brakes, uh, you know, when you hit the brake, they don't really stop like you'd want. So it creates a new challenge for me, which I really like. Gotcha. It's been fun to learn how to maximize that and uh, try to elevate my game to the next level. Nice. So you mentioned braking. Um, being a hybrid, of course, you have the brake regen. Have you adjusted your driving style for that? You do. So, I mean, there's so many different ways to adjust it now. You have, you have your manual brake bias. You have your brake migration, which is changing. When it, how the brake bias shifts through the brake zone. Okay. So it's not like a static brake bias. Sure. So as you go into the corner, it'll shift more to the rear because as you lose downforce, obviously you can't have the brake bias as far to the front because you're producing less front downforce, which means you'll lock the front tires. So we have a migration adjuster, which will move it from front to rear throughout different parts of the brake zones, throughout different speed ranges. So uh, it is very useful. It's also very easy to get lost and get it wrong. So yeah. as a driver, that's been a learning process, how to, how to adjust that, how to use it for different conditions, different uh, tire conditions. So as a tire gets older and older, it's easier to lock the brakes under these kind of lower speeds. So you want to move the migration, migration more to the rear. So it's, uh, it's been a big trial and error for me as a driver, as well as, as a whole program learning about this course, new, yeah. uh, new hybrid technology. Yeah, so we've, we've talked a little bit off camera, you know, and you mentioned that you have to rely on a lot more data coming from your engineer, basically, compared to a GT car. Do you want to elaborate on that maybe a little bit again? Yeah, exactly. So as I said, so these brakes are very temperature dependent. Yeah. When it gets cooler, they don't work maybe in, in the window that they're supposed to work in. So traditionally, in a GT car, you know, if you're locking the fronts, you move the bias to the rear. Um, and in this car, you know, if you're locking a front or locking the rears, it could be very well that you actually, so if you're locking the rears, they're actually might just be too cold and they're building temperature too late and then locking. So actually it's counterintuitive, right? Because you then actually need to move it rearward to create more temperature early in the brake zone, which then uh, you decelerate more efficiently and you'd also have more temperature, which doesn't make it grab as hard late in the brake zone. So um, that's all stuff that as a driver, you know, you feel it lock and you're like, oh, I have rear locking, but now we have to rely on the engineers, on the data, that we, they can see all the numbers live, live telemetry. They feed us that information and will help guide us in which direction we need to go. So it's, uh, it's definitely a very a, different level. Very big spaceship, yeah. Gotcha. So speaking of spaceship, uh, we've also talked a little bit about the workload inside the cockpit. How does it feel again compared to the previous classes? It is a lot uh, compared to GT. So uh, when I was in the GTLM class, we didn't have a lot of switches, but this thing is a, is a whole nother level. So um, especially now that we take off on the e-motor out of pit lane, that's a whole new level. Um, even just that alone, like we have a knob, different strategies on how to accelerate away from the pit box the most efficient way, whether on cold tires, hot tires. So if I'm out on track, uh, you know, and the next guy getting in is gonna be taking off on cold tires, then I change change the setting so it's ready for him to take off on cold tires. Um, if we're double stinting tires, then I'll be taking off on hot tires out of the pit box, then we use a different strategy. So uh, even just 
whether you're on track, driving a lap, or even if you're on your end lap into pit lane, uh, you're changing buttons left, right, and center. So it's, it takes a lot of um, kind of mental capacity to drive this car. It's yeah. not just driving it as fast as you can like we're used to. So that's been a bit of an adaptation process for myself, but I've really enjoyed it. So would you go back to a GT racing now that you've had a chance to do the LMDA stuff? Well, I mean, the simplicity and just, um, you know, fun factor of just driving a car as fast as you can, that's definitely, uh, the GT is all about that. Yeah. Um, you know, as you go up and the technology gets higher, uh, you become more and more of a engineer slash driver, not just a driver. Yeah. And I've really enjoyed that process. I've always been a, a numbers kid in school, and so this kind of falls into my wheelhouse, and I've really enjoyed getting to learn this car. Uh, it's created a new challenge for myself. I'm all about kind of pushing the boundaries, as yeah. everybody at BMW is, uh, whether it's the road, road cars or race cars. So now that I'm part of this program, it's uh, it's been a great pleasure. Very cool. So the talk around the paddock, actually, Actually, uh, you know, uh, this week or this weekend has been that the cars are pretty close to each other, all the competitors, and uh, this will be more of an endurance race like it should be, really, and the reliability will play a huge factor. Is that something that you think it's accurate? Definitely, yeah. Reliability is going to be key. I think a lot of the cars, a lot of the brands don't, one, have the kilometers they'd like as far as mileage before this event just to learn what's going to break, what's not going to break. Uh, I think there's a couple components that everybody's having to use across all platforms sure. that um, we're not 100% confident in that we'll make it to the end. So I think definitely if you, as I say, to finish first, first you must finish. That's going to be our goal. I think as a driver, we also are having to drive a bit on the conservative side to take care of certain parts on the car yeah. that um, we know are going to be a, potentially a limiting factor depending on um, you know mileage, uh, you know spin ups on cold tires, all types of little things. So it's definitely it's not going to be just a drive flat out race. It's going to be a very different mindset than what we're used to. But uh, it's the same for everybody and we're going to have to adapt and, and just try to do better than the rest. So before I ask you one more question, should we go to the side and kind of talk about the cockpit a little bit? Sure. Anything that you want to point out that you think is like really cool to know? Well, actually here at the top, we have a, a digital camera mirror. So that actually is um, what is our main eyes in the car. Obviously okay. we have the side mirrors, which are quite small. The camera is here up top that points rearward. Um, and that gives you a full kind of 3D view of what's going on from behind. Um, it gives really good perspective. You can actually see all the way to this part in the car. So it has a good uh, good range there. That's a cool feature. We have a little air tube here on top that connects to our helmet to give us some ventilation in the car. And then, uh, as I said, brake, balance, migration, um, and with the, the MGU, um, we have two. We have these two rotaries, one on the left side, one on the right side, the blue and the gold. Um, those are how we're adjusting, basically, the brake balance that I talked about, and then also this migration point that I talked about. As you get into the corner, you lose downforce, you need to move the migration to the rear. Um, so we're adjusting those two things on the fly over the course of the race, stint, different weather conditions, uh, and tire conditions. So what's what's the most used switch in the car? Well, used switch is definitely gonna be the flasher button because we're gonna have to be upper right corner, flashing the slower cars, telling them we're coming, uh, trying <laughs> to be as efficient, as efficient as possible in traffic. So so this is nice for a change because in the GT car, you're normally, always going to Normally you're to getting the, the Christmas tree lights flashing in your mirrors. Exactly. Now that'll be us. Um, so definitely going to have to do some some thumb push-ups in the morning to try to get it a little stronger. Does it feel tight inside? I mean, it's a pretty tight cockpit. It is very tight inside. Um, I'm very lucky, I'm only 5'8", so I'm on the small side. I do have a little insert. I slide in because my two co-drivers are taller than me. Okay. So, uh, so I have my little them. my kitty booster seat. Okay. <laughs> a GT car, you had sliding pedal box, yeah. so everyone had the same seat, and sure. you would just slide the pedals to and fro. Okay. Um, this, it's all static, the wheel's static. Uh, the pedals are static, so the only thing you can move is by putting an insert in. Gotcha. So we've all had to compromise a little bit on seat position, but sure. thankfully um, I'm not too picky when it comes to that. As long as I can sit up high enough, I'm happy. So uh, that's all good there, but definitely getting in and out is a bit of a science, and we've had to kind of get used to that. But Is, um, is there a height limit for a driver? Um, there is, because there's actually rules that you're only allowed to sit. They measure from this point down, and you, you're only allowed to be, um, I don't remember the exact measurement, but you have to actually they have a window. You can't sit too low and you can't sit too high. Gotcha. So um, that's another challenge that you have because obviously my teammates need to be in a legal window and I need to be in a legal window. Um, so there's a lot, of, a lot of little rules and regulations you have to be paying attention to and making sure everyone's um, being safe as well. Gotcha. Final question. Would you say that 24 hours of Le Mans is like the, the goal for you? 
that's something that you're like you you would be looking forward to. For sure. I mean, 24 Le Mans is is one of the big you know the Triple Crown. It's yeah. one of the the big ones. Exactly. Um, I haven't had the pleasure to do it. I hope to in the next couple of years. Now that we have this yeah. this beautiful car to go to race it with, I know we'll be there next year. Um, hopefully, I'll be one of the guys to take on that challenge. Cool. I've won Daytona already. Uh, I've won Nurburgring. Uh, 24 hours of Spa and 24 hours of Le Mans are the, the last two I need to get, so I'm 50% yeah. away there. So hopefully I'll have a chance uh, next year uh, or the year after. So. Awesome. Well, Connor, thank you so much. Uh, good luck tomorrow or today whenever the video goes goes live. And uh, hopefully you get a win this one. If not, we'll see you at the next one. Yeah, thank I you. Appreciate it. Thank, thank you. you. Guys, thank you so much for watching. As always, please subscribe and I'll see you in the next one.